The satisfaction of finding something completely unique is one of the things that drives many scientists to their career. As a result, scientists at CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, have reactivated their cosmic cannon, the Large Hadron Collider. Imagine the scientific community's excitement when a Large Hadron Collider suddenly uncovered something altogether new. The new object is so enigmatic that some scientists have dubbed it a ghost. What has the Collider just discovered? Why was it kept hidden for so long? Join us as we investigate the incredible discovery made by CERN researchers that alters everything. The Large Hadron Collider has revealed the precise nature of these particles, as well as other intriguing details. But what exactly is the Large Hadron Collider? The Large Hadron Collider, LHC, is the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator. It is housed in CERN, the European Particle Physics Laboratory in Switzerland. After three years of maintenance and modifications, the LHC reopened on April 22, 2022. Run 3 began on July 5th, a day after the 10th anniversary of the discovery of the Higgs boson. The LHC is used by scientists to put theoretical predictions in particle physics to the test, notably those linked with the standard model. While the standard model can explain practically all particle physics discoveries, several problems remain unresolved, such as what dark matter and dark energy are, why is matter more abundant than antimatter? The LHC is intended to assist in answering such topics. If you see a news story about unusual new subatomic particles, chances are they were discovered at CERN. In January 2022, CERN scientists claimed evidence of X particles in the quark gluon plasma produced in the Large Hadron Collider. The startling reality is that CERN succeeded in replicating a scenario that hasn't occurred naturally since a few microseconds after the Big Bang. The finding of the Higgs boson in 2012 was the LHC's crowning achievement. Although it is commonly referred to as the God particle, it is not as wonderful as the moniker suggests. It was significant since it was the last prediction of the standard model that had yet to be proved. However, the Higgs boson is far from the LHC's lone discovery. The LHC has also discovered roughly 60 previously unrecognized hadrons, which are complex particles made up of diverse combinations of quarks, according to the science journal CERN Courier. Nonetheless, all of those new particles remain inside the confines of the standard model, which the LHC has struggled to exceed, much to the dismay of many scientists who have spent their lives researching on alternative ideas. The first tempting signs that a breakthrough was on the way came in 2021, when LHC data analysis revealed patterns of activity that indicated modest but distinct deviations from the standard model. Surprisingly, CERN intends to invest $23 billion on the construction of a new 100-kilometer-long super collider. Interesting fact, the LHC's annual energy consumption is equivalent to one-third of the electricity consumed by families in the canton of Geneva. However, the numerous discoveries associated with the LHC have justified the expenditure. The discovery of ghost particles, known as neutrinos, is one such achievement. The joint efforts of CERN's forward search experiments enabled this momentous accomplishment. Neutrinos are some of nature's most mysterious particles, capable of travelling through the Earth as if it didn't exist. Neutrinos, on the other hand, are the most prevalent particle in the universe. Every second, nearly 100 trillion neutrinos travel absolutely harmless through your body. The fact that neutrinos do not interact with other particles very frequently makes detecting them difficult. But this does not imply that they never interact. The likelihood that any individual neutrino will interact with another particle is just very low. But what are neutrinos? And why are they making such a fuss? Neutrinos have no charge. Their name indicates that they are neutral. While the mass of neutrinos has yet to be properly calculated, we know it must be exceptionally small. Scientists at the Karlsruhe Tritium Neutrino Experiment in Germany were able to determine the top limit of neutrino mass to be 0.8 electron volts, or EV. An electron volt is the amount of kinetic energy gained by an electron when it is accelerated by a 1 volt potential difference. While measuring mass with energy units may appear strange at first, 
Albert Einstein demonstrated how mass and energy are two sides of the same coin, as described by his famous equation E equals mc squared. And extremely small particle masses are often given in EV because the kilogram conversion is so small, 0.8 EV is about 1.4 by 10 to the 36 kilograms. To put things into perspective, neutrinos are around 10,000 times less heavy than electrons. Neutrinos don't interact at all with the strong nuclear force that binds atomic nuclei together, but they do interact with the weak force that controls radioactive decay. Ultimately, this is how neutrinos are produced. For instance, the Catron experiment determined the neutrino mass resulting from the decay of tritium isotopes. Numerous neutrinos were formed in a fraction of a second after the Big Bang, but many neutrinos are still produced today. They form in the nuclei of stars, particle accelerators and atomic reactors, and they are also present during supernovas and radioactive decay of substances. Despite the fact that neutrinos have proven to be a difficult nut to crack for scientists, physicists believe that neutrinos outnumber protons in the universe by a billion times. This is due to their ability to remain neutral to the great majority of compounds present in the universe, allowing billions of them to pass through a square centimetre of your body undetected. Most meta-like light beams just pass through them as if they were travelling through a clear glass. In contrast to other particles, which may be deformed by interactions with other matter, neutrinos carry a wealth of information as they travel across space. The study of neutrinos helps us to have a better understanding of the origins of the universe. Neutrinos were found while scientists were striving to unravel the riddle of beta decay. The strange thing about beta decay is that it appears to break two fundamental physical laws. The law of energy conservation and the law of momentum conservation. They discovered that during beta decay, the final particle configuration appeared to have slightly too little energy and a proton remained stationary instead of moving in the opposite direction as the electron. In 1930, scientist Wolfgang Pauli proposed that an additional particle may escape the nucleus, bringing the lost energy and momentum with it. However, Pauli was well aware that the particle he had proposed could not be discovered. I've done a terrible thing, he said to a colleague. I've postulated a particle that cannot be detected. Our sun emits a large number of neutrinos, many of which end up bombarding the Earth. Scientists set up multiple detectors to detect these neutrinos, but their experiments only detected one third of the neutrinos expected. Scientists have been striving to address this problem for many years, but they have been overlooking one fundamental fact. Neutrinos come in three flavours. The ordinary neutrino, the muon neutrino, and the tau neutrino. As they travel between the Sun and Earth, neutrinos bounce between these three forms. This explains why the earliest neutrino experiments, which were only designed to detect one sort of neutrino, routinely missed two-thirds of the total amount. The finding made by CERN was the first time neutrinos were identified within the LHC or any particle accelerator at all. The breakthrough, which opened up a fresh new window for scientists to investigate the subatomic world, sparked the ensuing excitement. The capacity to detect neutrinos within the LHC will aid scientists in learning more about their role in the universe. Prior to the LHC's discovery of neutrinos, scientists had already trapped neutrinos. There was the Super Kamiokon detector from Japan, the Mini Boon detector from Fermilab, and the Antarctic Ice Cube detector. Using a method known as Cherenkov radiation, they were able to detect neutrinos. This Cherenkov radiation technique operates on the same principle as an aircraft exceeding the speed of sound, resulting in a sonic boom. The particle is designed to go through a light slowing medium, leaving behind a faint blue glow that scientists are seeking for. Even while these experiments can detect the signals of neutrinos coming from the sun, various issues remain. Scientists, for example, are unable to distinguish the types of high-energy neutrinos created when these particles collide in a conventional particle accelerator. In order to detect these artificially manufactured neutrinos, scientists from the Phaser Collaboration created a new detector dubbed Phaser NU. How does Phaser NU work? The Phaser NU is made up of solid metal plates of lead and tungsten with multiple layers of substance called emulsion in between them that detects light. 
The neutrinos will initially smash with the atomic nuclei in the dense metal plates to create their particle byproducts. The subsequent phase is the emulsion, which acts identically to conventional photographic film. The emulsion reacts with the neutrino leftovers, imprinting the particles tracing contours as they travel through it. The scientists then create the emulsion and investigate the particle trails left by the neutrinos. Physicists can use this information to establish that some of the marks were caused by these particles. This approach even allows scientists to discriminate between the three types of neutrinos discovered. This demonstrated not only that they had chosen the proper position inside the massive ring to seek for neutrinos, but also that their new detector was capable of doing so. However, now that they have a working detector, the researchers are not content and are working on a larger version of it. This version will be more sensitive to neutrino detection. They will also be able to differentiate between neutrinos and antineutrinos, which are neutrinos' antimatter counterparts. Are neutrinos dark matter? Dark matter is the elusive substance that many scientists believe can explain the additional gravity that holds galaxies and galaxy clusters together. Dark matter cannot be seen and interacts with conventional matter only through gravity. If it interacts with conventional matter at all, it does so only extremely weakly. Neutrinos look to be a good fit, but there's a catch. They're not big enough. Even with innumerable neutrinos filling every nook and crevice of the universe, the three known neutrino types, electron, muon and tau, have a maximum energy of 0.8 eV, which is unlikely to account for all dark matter. Let us know what you think of these ghost particles in the comments section below.